Hello, Crystal here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm back. I'm trying to be consistent about um, the content that I post. So I want to talk about today is raising confident children and praying over them. And I wanted to share some scriptures that I'm only going to share two um, scriptures that I actually wrote in my children's books, book, their book bags for the year. So I started this last year when my son went to um, second grade and I decided to write scriptures in his book bag. Um, maybe I could share the pictures. I'm not a pro at editing yet, but I wrote some scriptures in his book bag just to proclaim over him. And I also had him, um, we chose one scripture for him, for him to focus on for the year. So it was Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I made sure he said that every morning and also don't know the scripture right now, but I also had him say, I have the mind of Christ. So it was to put him, you know, I, to me, when you let your children do affirmations and you speak positive over them, it's really important as they grow up because emotionally they need to be well. So they can strive for all the success or whatever they do in life. But as long as you can collect yourself in your mind and be able to speak positive things over your life, that is very important. I wasn't raised like that. My husband wasn't raised like that. So it's very important for me to teach my children to do that because I had to learn that as an adult. So um, applying scriptures to my children's life is very important to me. So I have a 30-day devotional that I um, put together, and I'm going to share it on my Instagram page. And um, when I did it originally, it was called Raising Emotionally Well Children. But I changed the title to Raising Confident Children because I believe that when you speak scripture over your children's life and you teach them to do the same and you also teach them to be mentally stable and know how to reel themselves back in, then that is like one of the most positive things you can do for your children. So third day devotional, Raising, raising Confident Children. And I'm going to share the two scriptures that I um, wrote in Major and Cadence's book bag this year. Major went to third grade and Cadence started kindergarten. So I see it as like a new season of their lives. And you know, as we go through seasons, we have to adjust accordingly. But I'm also a mom that is very in tune with my children's personalities and pay very close attention to who they are. I don't want to be the mom that downplays their skills and who they are and their dreams and whatever they're into at this time in their lives like I want them to be able to be as free as possible and to explore as they grow so I applied scriptures that apply to them right now where they are in their lives so for major he's eight and a half and with him starting third grade um, he's very advanced and he's very wise. He's very smart. He retains a lot of information and he's just, I mean, he's a genius to me. Um, even right now, we're only four days into the school year and his teacher loves him, which is always the reaction he gets. But I'm also realizing that my son is a leader because she said to us this morning that he did an assessment. He's on the fourth grade level already, and he's only in third grade, four days into third grade, and he's on the fourth grade level, and he's way more advanced than, you know, the average third grader, and then also he's a helper, and he loves to help and be a resource, so that puts him in a position of leadership, so I want to make sure that I, you know, pay attention to those characteristics that he have and his strength. So if his strength is to lead and he's very smart, it doesn't take a long time for him to learn anything. So paying attention to stuff like that is really important. So the scripture that I wrote for him is Matthew 5, 14. And 
that scripture talks about being the light on top of a of the hill and I chose that scripture for him because to me that's who he is like right now because he loves to be a leader and he loves to be a resource it's like he's bringing light into darkness he's being the light for someone so if somebody doesn't know anything or they need help he's the one to jump in and help and he's very resourceful and i mean he knows how to look up stuff do google all kind of stuff like he he's very adaptable and that's a leadership skill and he's just always been a loving kid and a very helpful kid so that's why i chose matthew 5 14 and it says you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And, um, you know, growing up, I always used myself as a reference because I was raised in a generation where, like, I wasn't encouraged to be the light. So when I, when I hear be the light, it's like I wasn't encouraged to pursue the person that God created me to be. So for Major, I want him, I mean, this is for all of my children, even for me and my husband, but I want him to be the light because he has some things that he's dealing with where he will downplay who he is or he'll be very hard on himself. And usually when you have a child that is very smart and um, far more advanced, as they get older, they can experience peer pressure and that'll make them be someone else like they'll conform and they'll join a group of kids that are doing certain things and then they don't stay true to who they are and that's how they get off the path and after watching my son for the past few years he tends to do that from time to time he will follow other kids and what they do and he knows that that's not who he is but because he feels like that's how he can fit in and keep friends he will follow just to be liked so it's very important for um, us to encourage him to be true to who he is and be the leader that he is because he seems like he doesn't want to embrace that he is unique and he's one of a kind and he's a leader so I pray that that verse over him and I can say Lord I thank you that you've made major a light of the world for his generation I always pray specifically for their generation I thank you that he cannot be hidden and that he is lighting paths for many people in his generation that he is bringing light to darkness in many people's lives so it doesn't matter how big or how small the issue is, he will be the light for someone. He's the light for me for sure because we have conversations about a lot of things and I'm always, you know, like, oh, I didn't know that. So he is, he's very wise. Now for Cadence, my five-year-old who just started kindergarten, um, ever since I began to see her personality and who she really is, she is like... I don't know how to explain her personality. She's the middle child. And if you've watched Trolls, because that was her movie for a long time, you know, they talk about rainbows and more glitter. And that's that's definitely Cadence. So if you watch Trolls and you see the glitter bursting out of everywhere, that's who she is if I had to explain who she was. So, you know, glitter is all sparkly and everywhere, but it's pretty, but it could get in your eye or on you and it gets, you know. So she is that child that we're learning to balance. Like she's the one that she's here, but she's there. And we love that about her because I don't know, I couldn't imagine her being any other way. She's so she's very loving and the most loving. And now that, you know, we really pay attention to her because she's older 
she loves to make everyone feel loved and she's always asking are you okay so you know my prayer for her is that um she will not be taken advantage of and that her very alert her heart you know won't be broken due to any type of relationship any friendship even me you know as a parent that i don't do anything to break her heart um because she's very emotional but she really loves hard she loves people and especially people that become very special to her she loves really hard so um she has times where let's see her weakness She gives a thousand hugs a day and she always want to kiss you. She loves to be all over you. She's just very emotional. Like she's very touchy feely and that's how she expresses who she is. So I think if she, she's, she, if she experiences someone that doesn't really give her that love in return. Now me as mom, I will say that sometimes I'd be like, no, Cadence, okay, thank you for the hug, but go, you got to get off me, you know, but I think if she, as she gets older and if she begins to experience people that just really push her off, like brush her off and they're harsh and she'll begin to question like why they don't like me. So I think she, that, that opens the door or plants the seed of rejection. So it's very important right now as parents that me and her dad give her the love in return. And don't make her feel like she's being rejected. So whenever she wants to talk or she wants a hug or she wants to lay on us or she always wants us to do something with her, whether it's drawing or writing or whatever, um, she always wants to be close to someone in the presence of someone. Um, whether So she's not the one that's going to be able really to embrace <laughs> my husband says she'll probably be the last one to leave the nest and i actually believe that she'll be the one that will like have to push out um and i don't know it might be hard you know when she does get older and the other two left the house we have a three-year-old i have to that she a whole video in its own but um she, i the the first and the third one they probably wouldn't have any problem um, leaving the house, but her, she would definitely be the one that sticks around because she is the one that likes to make sure everything's okay. She's also a helper and she just loves and she loves love. Like she loves to give and make people feel happy. She loves to leave notes. She loves to draw pictures for people just to give a gift. So my scripture for her was Joshua 1, 9 and I wrote that in her book bag because she always needs to be strong and courageous. So the scripture says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I chose that scripture because, like I said, you know, she may have times in her life where she feel alone and she might be rejected by some people that she she wants to love. But maybe they're not the ones that she's supposed to give her love to. Um, and I want her to be um, strong in those moments and know that God is always with her because when we have lonely seasons... He is the one that we should be leaning on all of the time and depending on, but especially during those times when we feel like we don't have anyone in our lives that get us or understand, we always have to know that God is with us all the time. So we're not alone. We're being rejected for a reason. And I, she has to know that all the time. Like She has to be strong and courageous and know that the love that she gives is a strength for her and she's a gift giver. So that's a strength as well. And I want to make sure that she uses those strengths in the right way, according to who she was created to be in her calling. And um, my prayer is also that she will not um, be discouraged when she's in those moments. 
So those are the scriptures that I chose for them. And like I said, I chose those scriptures because I always think about where they are right now in life and what they're going.